Good morning, everyone. You're very welcome to today's session of Reboot Your Business Through Your Business Development Plan from Griffith College, Dublin, Cork and Limerick in association with Chambers Ireland. This is our last episode in the current series. Um, so we hope that you've enjoyed the entire series to date and that you're looking at the website, at the resources and at the um, at the resources online, apologies, at the resources online and the um, links to mentoring and the videos from the sessions as well. Uh, we do invite you to engage on social media using the hashtag Reboot2020. And also that you are downloading the workbook to uh, look at the different questions that might be related to your business. We have a great session planned for you today um, with a really nice lineup of speakers. We are going to be using live polls during today's session, so we encourage you to interact with those. Those will be shared on screen and you can engage with them for all of our Zoom attendees today. Um, we welcome everyone who's joining us on YouTube also. And thank you to all the small businesses that are part of Chambers Ireland and also those businesses throughout the country and also internationally as well. We're delighted to be joined by viewers in the UK and also Malta and other countries. So I hope you have a great session. Please feel free to submit your Q&A throughout um, at the bottom of your screen on the bottom right. You'll find the Q&A button and you can submit your questions there to the team. I'd like to hand over now to my colleague Sinead in Griffith College Cork to introduce and lead today's session. So thank you very much and enjoy today. Thank you, Michael. Good morning, everyone. As Michael mentioned, my name is Sinead O'Dee and I'm based at the beautiful Griffith College Cork campus on Wellington Road. I hope you're feeling good today, and enjoying the sunshine and that little bit of extra freedom that we've all got this week. It's hard to believe we're on topic nine of the series. Uh, the last few weeks have flown by. So thank you to, um, for your company over the last few weeks. We have really enjoyed it. Today is a, a special webinar because we're bringing it back to you again. The individuals who are running the businesses, leading the businesses, making those tough decisions. And to close out the series of webinars, we wanted you, we really wanted to support you in this role. So let's get started. My colleague Geraldine McGing, uh, the program director for the SME management program at Griffith College, is going to give a brief review of everything we have covered over the last 10 weeks or 10 sessions, three weeks. And then I'll come back, I'll join again, and I'll introduce you to today's speakers, our guest speaker and our Griffith College lecturer. So Geraldine, when you're ready, let's go. Thank you, Sinead, and good morning, everyone, on this beautiful morning. I'm just going to put up some slides here and just run over what we have covered over the last number of sessions. So here we go. Okay, so the, the, the whole purpose of this was to look at your business and you taking ownership of it, obviously, to make decisions post COVID. So we, what, we, what we started out with was a review of different aspects that were relevant to your business. So for example, what we looked at was, what do you want? And the very first session, if you recall, uh, Dennis went through um, doing a SWOT analysis on yourself. What is it that you want to achieve? What is it that you want your business to achieve? And then we looked at what has changed in the actual marketplace and that how are they going to impact upon your business? And based on the changes, what are your options? What can you do going forward? So it was a reflective time to think about what, what can you do with the material that's been, the market that's, that's there, the material that we can use, what can you do with it? We moved on then to looking at actual management resources that are available to you. And um, I know different chambers are offering different supports. Uh, in session five, we looked at a lot of the financial supports that are available to people. Uh, we looked at the people that you can use, both in internal stakeholders, your staff, and external stakeholders, people that you might be able to outsource to. The whole idea of networking and getting out there and keeping your name with people. 
Um, we then looked at communications this week, how you look at your marketing plans, how you look at the actual message that you put out about you and your business. So when we're looking at that, there are a lot of available resources, but the most important thing is to write down your ideas, because when you write down your ideas, what gets measured gets done. So if you can write it down, you can actually put a framework on it. So I hope you were able to use the workbook as we were going through to help you with that. And then, so there was a lot of resources there, a lot of speakers giving different insights on how they were able to use the material that was available to them. So I hope you'll be able to use some of that. But now the work is, how are you going to reboot your business development plan yourself? Now, some of you are back trading this week, but some of you are, you know, you have more time to think about it. So your business development plan, what I'd ask you to think about, and if possible to do it, think about the mentor that is available through Chambers and Griffith College. If you would like to use a mentor, please send us back in your um, application form for that, because we will definitely support you in that. And also, if you want to do your business development plan, um, we, I have the link coming up here shortly where you can register uh, to, to complete it. But also what I would encourage you all is to think about all of the different speakers. How can they be of benefit to your business? What can you learn from their learning? So if you can take anything away from that, that would be wonderful. So this is the link for the, um, for the certificate in SME management. It is an actual credited award on the framework. So it is giving you recognition for your efforts that you've put in looking at different aspects of your business. So just to conclude, I would like to thank you all for your feedback, your comments, observations that you've had that have assisted us to make this program and the delivery of the webinars successful. If you feel there is something additional that you'd like to see that we can facilitate, do let us know. You have my email address and you, we'd love to hear from you. And I wish you well going forward. And in the meantime, I'll give you back to Sinead who will introduce our guest speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Geraldine. So for those of you who are here on day one of the series, you may already be familiar with my colleague, uh, Dennis Coleman. Dennis is an associate lecturer and an academic supervisor at Griffith College Dublin, Griffith College Limerick, University of Limerick and IT Carlo. He's also a business owner and a supply chain consultant with over 35 years of experience across a number of business sectors. Dennis will be joined today by guest presenter, Dr. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Mur Dr. Eddie Murphy is one of Ireland's leading clinical psychologists and wellbeing advocates. He's an adjunct professor, associate professor with the UCD School of Psychology. He's a well-known TV psychologist on the popular RTE One program, Operation Transformation. He's the author of the bestseller, um, Becoming Your Real Self, a practical toolkit to manage everyday problems. And he's a psychology author of a Lust for Life wellbeing program. And in his spare time, he's also an ambassador for Cystic Fibrosis Ireland and Cycle Against Suicide. So over the last few weeks, Dennis and Dr. Reddy have been working closely together to and kindly put together lots of practical tips and advice to share with you over the next hour on how you can prepare for the next chapter and feel mentally strong to face the challenges up ahead. So I won't take up another second of this valuable session. And over to you now, Dennis and Eddie. Thank you, Sinead. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Dennis. Good morning, Eddie. How are you? Um, I suppose the first thing from my perspective is just listening to the list from Geraldine and 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 Sinead that there's been an awful lot covered over the last number of over of weeks, a lot of it focused on the business and strategies and things they can do for the business. When I was thinking about this, I suppose over the over the last while, um, one thing that you know there's lots of tools, there's lots of things we can do to help people plan and do finance and all this stuff. I have a business and thing that hits me regularly is stress the worry the concern what am I going to do you, know, you can have all the ideas in the world you can have all the plans in the world but there's that worry what well I, I think uh, it's a 
you know, I think we start with the what I call the human doing and the human being. And this session today is about the human being, the business owner, because no business is successful without its owner and being well. And we're looking at the whole area of rebooting and rebooting is around a level of sustainability. And to be sustainable, it's about you start by sustaining yourself. The phrase you can't pour from an empty cup comes to mind. So how do we sort of how do we get to a point that we're able to manage our own stress levels? Well, understanding stress, Dennis, and, and viewers and listeners is, is a very, it's an interesting thing. First of all, it's to acknowledge it in the first place because of the coronavirus and uh, it, uh, the, our level of uncertainty. We've never faced it, this level of uh, unprecedented uh, challenge in our life. Uh, in, in psychology, we're always interested in life events. What different life events happen? And, there, and we actually scale life events. There's life events such as, and the nor, like up to, now, up to now, like the highest life event still is, is death, um, separation, relationship breakdown, uh, redundancy, uh, and then some positive ones like having a new baby, setting up, uh, setting up a business. Uh, uh, so there's different life events can happen. But, but this coronavirus is a, a totally, it's a black swan event. It's come out of nowhere. And uh, uh, and it's and now we, our society is being re-engineered as for and in rebooting your businesses and thinking about that, it you're you're forced to rethink in a way and that it adds to levels of stress. So it's normal then as stress is a normal response, but there's a different levels of stress and maybe we have a poll here today to try and capture the stress that people. Um, that people just get a sense of that stress and what's it been like for people and i know we've done a, I've done a number of talks so we're going to stick up a poll here we really want to make today as interactive as possible and we're asking how stressed are you are you like you know no stressed at all you're somewhere in the middle below the middle above the middle or you're really you know there's a lot of stress and excessively stressed in your life so we're trying to get that and we're going to we can't vote um but we know that you can vote and we encourage you to vote there and we'll then be able to look at the results and get a feel for where where stress is at at the moment. It'd be quite interesting um, where pe people's levels of stress are. And stress is, a, I suppose, one of the key is to no normalize it, is that it's stress is a normal response. Um, we need to be, in a way, uh, we, uh, we need stress. Stress gets business owners out. I've a, I'm a sole trader, so I understand when t business, my business, like your business, has changed because a lot of it has in, gone into a different space, and uh, uh, so uh, so having uh, on recognizing where stress is at, um, where your stress is at, and uh, identifying as normal. We all need stress. Stress is normal. It's when stress becomes distress, that's when it becomes more challenging. Okay, so can we... We're just maybe... waiting for a few more responses there to come in, just to assure everyone who's watching that the poll responses are all anonymous. Um, so please feel free to to uh, submit. We'll, we'll share the poll now in just a second. We've got about 16 um, participants who haven't, uh, who haven't entered a response yet. The numbers are going up. That's great. So if you just pop that in, we'd really appreciate it. And in, in terms of stress, uh, stress is, uh, you know, stress is our ad adaption. In, hu in human evolution, we uh, had to kill animals to eat them uh, or we uh, fight. That was our fight, fight and flight we're talking about. Or we, to get, we saw these animals that they were going to eat us. So we had to get away really, uh, we had to flight, we had to get away really fast. The evolutionary secret actually was to uh, uh, hang out with people that were slower than you. So I don't know how that joke goes over on a on a on on a uh, on a webinar, but uh, but it is a good one. Um, so there there we go. So in terms of the levels of stress, we can see that uh, ups upwards of uh, so over seventy five percent of people are experiencing stress. I mean, from twenty five percent on, and then seven seven percent of a significant levels of stress. Uh, 34 so that's uh, you know so you can see there very very quickly actually that over 60 percent of people are experiencing this stress above 50 percent and like that that's what you would expect um 
and and uh, it's so you can sort of see it's an evil distribution, of, uh, not an even, but a distribution there where many people have stress and little have no little have no stress. And sometimes the stresses are around the business side, around the family side, trying to uh, balance uh, financial stress and worries and concerns. And uh, so we're going to today, because it is about practical toolkit, and we're going to, uh, thanks very much for that, Paul. So it's a practical toolkit, and we're going to be looking at um, how we can manage this stress in a way that uh, that allows us to stay strong and stay well. Uh, understanding so when when i think about stress then it's this fight flight or freeze mechanism and the, the adrenalization that happens and a constant adrenalization then becomes chronic stress and chronic stress and toxic stress can impact a lot on our physical well-being over time or particularly over time and we have can emerge as stress related uh, uh, illnesses so it's so it's really helpful now to start thinking about how can you manage your stress and what would it be how would you identify your tri triggers what would be your triggers for stress for me when it comes to stress and gen generally it would be tension in my shoulders i'd feel it physically in my body a lot of men do that actually sometimes they struggle to acknowledge their stress in, a, in an emotional way and they'd say oh, i'm able to, i'm stressed or um but it comes out in a behavioral way like irritability and uh, for for women uh, for for women they're just r really better at discussing and normalizing and talking about their stress we've a lot to learn from from our sisters so we have a lot to learn um, if you have any uh, 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 questions or anything you want to, uh, you can put them into the Q&A box and the team here will handle those questions and we'll answer them as we go through the session. So, okay, so we have different types of stress. We have different formats of it. We have different reactions to it and it presents in different ways. So I suppose the best way to start then is to maybe give, help people identify um, it, how they will start to identify and maybe stress themselves. You've mentioned that you may find tension or irritability and, uh, and things like that. Is there anything that a person can use like, to... To, ident to identify Dennis? So like uh, a useful way to think about it is our, our thoughts, our emotions and our behaviors. So in terms of thoughts, uh, uh, particularly we, we can end up uh, catastrophizing or, you know, like, uh, uh, will this ever end? Uh, uh, how can I see what we like? Is this, our stress presently is predominantly caused by uh, the coronavirus, but it's actually caused by the uncertainty because we'd know certain, we'd know definitives. If we knew there was a definitive end, then we'd be able to say, okay, that's where it's at. But we're, we're, what we're doing is quite often we're ending up scanning, we're scanning because it's a threat. It represents a threat, and when we scan the environment, and that could mean ex uh, excessive uh, looking at social media, the news, uh, all that feeding information uh, actually adds to our levels of stress. So one of the key practical tips is really you get, identify a time to get your news source, because believe me, it's something big is going to happen in this area. You'll be let know. Uh, very quickly by lots of your friends but I think constant scanning for news and social media and uh, so stick to one authoritative resource and then just move it on from there in fact for me personally now I've actually stopped watching the news because there's nothing new in the news that I'm going to hear about this virus because I'm going to be told anyway um, so, so reducing that and then the thoughts so the erasing thoughts inability uh, to uh, to uh, then in terms of behavioral symptoms body tension irritability uh, sleep disturbance emotions we may feel overwhelmed we may feel uh, irritable we may feel sad we may feel anxious and worry excessive worry so there are some of the features of of so identifying your triggers um uh, uh, to to stress and then saying okay how can we manage that how can we look at managing that stress and that's the that's key do you think then that because of the amount of information that's flowing around the place at the moment, that we tend to maybe focus on things that are outside our control and try and take the problems of the world on our shoulders almost? 
we, we can do that uh, because the control is a very interesting thing. Um, uh, when I think about control, and uh, if you think about it, you know, if you're, if you think about your control, you have three circles. You have your circle of uh, your, your circle of control, your circle of influence, and your circle of concern. So, for example, I'm very concerned about uh, the whole area of mental well-being and mental well-being in Ireland and how it impacts on, on children, uh, how it impacts on adolescents, adults, older adults, right through the whole society, uh, how we look at engineer. But if I spend all my time in that place, I'm 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 it's sort of if uh, I'm not nearly gaining and I'm not doing, I'm not, it just creates more worry for me, if that makes sense. Yeah. And similarly, if you're concerned about all these other things like the global pandemic or the pandemic or uh, getting sick or concerned, you know, if you're concerned, but if you focus on your sphere of control, what is it that you can control? And the big things that we can control now, we can control our hand washing, like social distancing, face covering in public spaces. Like hand washing and uh, re-engineering, uh, like in rebooting our businesses, we're need we're thinking now about what we can control. So, is there a sanitizing station? Is there have we are we re-engineering the flow that people, if we can, people come in one space out the other? But we're thinking about it, and these are things in our control. Then, and once you start focusing on what you can control, then you start to reduce your stress. What are other areas around stress is around. Um, when we think about stress, we think about, uh, re first of all, in the first place, we talk about resilience. Resilience is having faced adversity previously. And believe me, I've no doubt that many of people attending the course here today will have experienced a downturn in 2008. And, and you, you got through that. So having experienced previous adversity, you, you know that you've got through adversity. And a big message from today is that you will, this will pass. This will, you will get through this as well. And uh, having, so uh, wh how do we a boost, a bo a boost our adversity? So uh, it's sometimes about how we change, how we think about the situation, changing our thoughts, changing our worlds. One of the things that when we're working with either therapeutically or even in organization and culture or thinking is that how we think about things generates the reality of things. So if I think that this will never pass, this is, uh, this is overwhelming, this is, then I'm in that space that I'm going to, and my thoughts are generating my emotions. If I think that, and you see, it's not about positive thinking because it's like telling somebody to positively, to just think positive. It's like telling somebody with a two toothache, you know, it's 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 sort of just just get on with it or or, or whatever, because it, we need to actually balance our thoughts and say, okay, I know it's pretty, it's not great at the moment, but these are the things I can focus on. These are the things. So you start moving your thoughts in a way that you that are more realistic and balanced. <clears throat> so focus a bit more on the positives than on the negatives. Well, f well, f balancing out the thoughts, so we can. Mm. So just thinking right. Uh, I feel stressed and I, I, I sort of feel that, oh, uh, you know, things, t t uh, it's such a beautiful day and the birds are singing in the sky. That's not necessarily going to uh, tackle my current stress. So it could be like, well, actually, what, am I, what is my stress thought? So it, it is that I'm, I'm struggling with the, the finances or putting the finances together on this or I'm, I'm, the, the cash flow is working out for me. So then it could be, well, what do I need to do? So about that, well, you know what? I'm not really strong on the, the metrics here. I'm going to talk to somebody that's strong on the metrics. So the thought then would be, OK, I'm worrying about the cash, but now I'm actually doing something about it. I'm focusing on talking to somebody that's good in this area on, on numbers so that's what i mean by having a thought and actually uh, uh so it's in a way it's like a tennis match you have a negative thought coming in and you meet it and you hit it back with uh, a balanced or counteracting thought as opposed to a positive thought that just is a little bit air can be a bit airy fairy you actually meet it with a real based thought the other model, if you want, is and which is very useful in terms of stress and chronic stress, is around the whole area of mindfulness. And mindfulness is about being in the present. And that's sort of in a space where you're, because worry is future-based. Regret and negativity and depression is pa past-based. So if uh, so, if you're future-based or past-based, you're in a place that's more potential for negativity. 
So how do you how do you stay in the present? And one of the areas around that is the whole area of mindfulness. And so basically what we're looking at then is we're looking at making changes, so changing the way we look at things, the way we think, the way we we move, <clears throat> the, 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 our outlooks and our perspective on things. So it, if we want to make changes. Ch change we... is critical. I think it's interesting that you brought up the word change because in a way, as human beings, we love things to be the same, fundamentally. People like sameness, they like routine and structure. And that's really important. We, we do like sameness. If you think about our behaviors, we sort of generally, even, even a lot of people now, they seem to, wouldn't be my style, but they seem to, they want to go back to the same place in terms of the holidays. They want to go back to the same place and all like sameness. And, uh, but, and even in the therapy room, when people come in, they go, well, I, actually, you know what? I, they, they have the problem and not me. They want other people to change and not themselves. So, but there's a really, a real good book, and it's, it's a, it's a two-hour read. It's called "Who Moved My Cheese." We'll put up this resource later on, but it's about the story of uh, two mice and two men, hem and haw, and sniff and scurry. And uh, if you've read this book, and a lot of people in management courses read it, but it's a really interesting book. I actually use it a lot in, in the therapy room as well because it's all about change and it's how we orientate ourselves towards, towards change. So hem and, haw, hem and Haw, the two men go into a, a cheese station every day. And I won't give you the full uh, best of the book, but it goes something like all the cheese is gone one day. So like it's almost like the, the pandemic has come in and taken out all their cheese. So he, Hem decides. Um, so they sit there and they, they, they're angry, they're resentful, and they decide that one of them decides to go into the maze, the maze, to try and find a new cheese station. And they go into that at this state, maze. And then it's about the fear that the person first experienced and then about uh uh then about how by the more often he went into the maze that he his fear reduced but he and he could then he tried to encourage his friend to come with him but he couldn't come now sniff and scurry the, the mice were uh they just found their runners and they got on into the maze and found the new cheese station but here's the key question and the question i want to put 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 to you all today is what would you do if you were not afraid? What would you do if you were not afraid? That's a real powerful question because that question will orientate us towards action. Action. If you, I'm just looking at the, my rebooted business action plan is the name of the program. Stay strong, stay well, but it's my, rebo my rebooted business action plan. And what's that action? What would I do if I wasn't afraid? It's a real powerful question. So orient ourselves. So it's seen that, seen to seen to um, how do we get to a point that uh, that we change? The challenge is for us to see change as normal. Change is not the exception. Change is what I are, I am orientated towards change. So to me, it's a little bit like you're standing in the sea. And you're facing the shore and the, currently this is what it feels like for many people the waves are coming in and they're slapping us at the back of the head and we can't see what's coming and we get hit and hit and hit and orientated us by turning sideways we're able to see the shore where we want to go and land but we're able to see the waves coming and we're able to jump and, and get over them and that's about orientation. So being orientated towards change is something that each business owner consistently needs to be involved in. That change is the norm. How can I change? And you're being invited to rebooting the program is a fundamentally an invitation to, to rethink and re, uh, get it uh, and to reboot. How can, <clears throat> how can a person then turn sideways in the sea? So it takes bravery What? because sometimes people are fearful in, in terms of they're fearful about, uh, about, about change. So just take, so it just, it's, so it's taking that first step, then it's taking the next step. And the more times you take that step, or if you imagine yourself ahead, you can, uh, so sometimes like with athletes and sports, they, they do a lot of visualization of where they want to be and they use that as a way. So I think about it before I walk the step. I think about that arrival point. And that's, that's often the way for, for that, that, that people use it. Um, to, to know, to not be held back by thoughts of failure. 
quite often in, in, in a business world, you know, to, you know, fail, fail big and then fail again. And then, then eventually keep going and keep going. Cause, and you know, that it's, it's about lear learning each time. What do, what do we learn? Getting feedback. The, the, the phrase is the feedback is the it, feedback is the breakfast of champions. Like how often can we get fee feedback and can we use feedback to our advantage? And sometimes actually, because in terms of creativity, uh, lots of people have different ideas around different business and they're, cons they're often afraid. I would say that um, earlier, earlier on, I would say I wouldn't talk to anyone else about that in case they'd walk away with my idea. You know, that's a very common thing in business, actually. Mm -hmm. But actually, what if, what you find out is people don't walk away with your idea. Point in that, then, that the person has to be willing to change. Well, no, you, people, you can't, you can't change other people. Only through changing yourself can other people around you change. So if you and uh, if you want to be, so that's really about leadership and personal leadership. And like, how do you, how, where, where do you, where would you put uh, your personal, re, re, where do you put that whole area of your personal leadership in? What, how does, what does that look like? Um, and, and delegation, like if you're in, a, in another area that you're not holding everything or knowing that I have certain skills. And I, um, so I know that my own skills might be people skills, but it might, might be great on the financial skills. So you build stuff, for people around you, or you really have to work harder on the areas that you're, you're, you, you have your own weaknesses in. Yeah, I, I actually, when you're talking about the word failures, the one word I would love to have banned from the English language is the word fail. I think it's a, but it's, it's our orientation towards it like because in american yeah. culture we have a different way it's like if, if we see failure as learning and the, you know then the, then it's then we 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 take away the power of that word and there's many different words over uh, over our uh lifestyle where or over our lives where they've had massive negative orientation and then it's been owned and been the power of that word has been taken out because it's been owned by, by different groups that it's been used against. Yeah, I remember that actually when I was setting up my business, the uh, on the Monday I was told by uh, Enterprise Board that there was no supports for service industry, what I did, and what I did was voodoo. Um, so I came away, first day of my business with zero. Uh, mm -hmm. What am I going to do next? And I could actually feel there was two, two I, I was actually very conscious of two emotions. One was doom and gloom, but the other was almost anger. It was, no one's taking this away from me. This is going See, to happen. That's a, that's a real powerful thing because if you, what you said is anger, you had two, two you know, more, like different doom and gloom. So yeah. your thoughts, that, remember your thoughts drive your emotions. That's a really good example, <clears throat> Dennis, of where people can, when you have a strong thought, it's driven by, by when you have a strong emotion, it's driven by a thought. So your anger is, could be driven like the hell with them. I'll prove them wrong or whatever. You know what I mean? Or, or the, uh, they don't know what they're talking about, or they're not orientated towards service oriented businesses. They just want technology or whatever products and to be exported, but, uh, but but they don't want to sort of service-based industry that helps assist this process go along versus, uh, and then that doom and gloom is the thought, like maybe they're right, maybe they have something to say, maybe they have more experience than I have, but they're just thoughts. And here's the thing, thoughts are not, thoughts are just thoughts. Thoughts are just thoughts. It doesn't, doesn't make them facts. Mm -hmm. Thoughts are not facts, they're just thoughts. Yeah, it's your questions so, there. Just conscious of the questions going in that yeah. they're anonymized mm -hmm. and, and, and in the in the the, Q, the Q and A space. And perhaps the time of uh, Sinead, are there questions that would like to be raised at this point? Thanks, Dennis. Yes, um, lots of questions and lots of uh, uh, lots of engagement. So thanks to everybody who's engaging. This is hopefully you're finding it beneficial to have. Um, Dennis and Eddie right here to just take this opportunity and um, help you. So let's just go to, we put a question out there about what do you do to manage stress? And there was a few um, great suggestions that maybe the others could, could, could um, uh, share. So what we do to manage stress is we talk over and over, not about COVID, but about opportunities, what we can offer our client base, what we can offer to what we can do to support them, even if it's free. 
and we entertain ourselves. We do video games, we play with the kids, the dogs, big uh, dog fan, Dr. Eddie, uh, cooking, relaxing, reading, putting yourself in a very positive and life enjoying atmosphere. So thanks for that. Uh, suggested lots of um, just dis basically deciding to think, like you say, Dr. Eddie, deciding to think and uh, act in a certain way that makes them feel better. Um, another good suggestion from Brendan, to manage stress, inhale deeply and let your breath out slowly. Um, that's another good idea. Um, sorry, Eddie, you okay? I like there? that one, Sinead. I like the, the, the breathing one because um, is I, I, I breathe in for me and I breathe out for you. It's a nice little mantra, you know, when you're taking nice deep breath in for five, I breathe in for me and I breathe out for you. Um, and that's a sort of an interesting thing. Also looking at the Q's and A's, I noticed that a lot of them are around the stresses of family life as well. Mm -hmm. You know, kids being out of school and the, the impact of uh, kids being out of school uh, and the the, the, la the destructuring, the de-routine and missing the connection with, with wider family networks. Yeah, yeah, that's certainly, um, it's like a, really grieving the old life and trying to manage the, the change of that life might be gone now. Um, so like, like I say, um, my stresses are my business. Um, when will large groups of people be together again? Do I need to be looking at a different career? My kids, three kids out of school since March, they're doing great, but I'm feeling bad for the, how long it's going on. Will, will they be open in September? Sad for the life we had. Yeah, sad for the life we had. Family, friends, going to matches, meeting people. We will. It's really important to know that hope exists here, right? So that, that, that and I'm not doing a Pollyanna, like the reality is there, the medical community, the science and health community right throughout the world, there are over 130 groups now trying to, uh, to get a vaccine in relation to this virus. So uh, there, you know, uh, there, there, there will be an end point to this. And we've got to keep our, you know, keep our uh, whole firm, uh, wash our hands, keep the, you know, uh, keep that social distancing. And that's critical for us is that we're, we're able to manage our piece of, of what we can do, staying in our circle of control. Yeah, actually, another interesting one, just um, the feeling of, I suppose, the fact that we're, that we're in lockdown means that um, that sense of freedom. I feel like I could do anything when I was single and before kids. Now it's not about me. It's about my husband and kids. Before this, the world was open. If things were bad, we could move, but now we're enclosed. Uh, so that's another stress point, kind of yeah, heightened. So it's a sense of, um, so it's a sense of being imprisoned, as it were, mm -hmm. right? And uh, but you know, if that for that particular, uh, I'd encourage you to read Victor Franklin. Actually, Man's Search for Meaning, because uh, uh, Victor Franklin is most one of the most powerful books in ever in the world where uh, he, he was, went to uh, uh, Auschwitz in Germany and he, was, uh, he lost everything. He lost his family, his every part, but he actually he kept a sense of control. He said, you might, you might own every part of me, but you don't own my thinking, you don't own my mind. And how he orientated his mind created a freedom for him and he had a freedom in the most uh, profound place. So uh, Man's Search for Meaning, Victor Franklin, might be a, a small, a good read for somebody where you can reorientate your thinking. It's not about thinking, oh, that's where he was and I should think and um, feel better. No, it's actually reading that to figure out how he thought and how he, he didn't see himself in an imprisoned state. Yeah, great, Eddie. Another question just around change, and it's um, you might be able to shed some wisdom on this one. What happens if someone? What happens if you've got someone who won't change easily? Uh, what happens if it's you that has the problem with change? So, if someone so, is so, resisting change, so yeah. somebody's in your life resisting the change. 
Yeah. That, is that it? Okay. So here's the, and I'm going to, this is like, uh, this is almost some tales from the therapy room now, because if people are in and they said, uh, I can't get them to change, they won't change. So, oh, so, and I, if I got a euro for every time of that, I, uh, I'd be uh, a millionaire. I'd be out in Virgin Ireland with Virgin Island with uh, Richard Branson, I'd say, or Nectar Island, wherever the hell it is. Um, you can't make people change. But if you change and be assertive about what you want and you change, the other person then may change. Okay? They may change, but they'll only change if you change. So, for example, if you're saying to somebody, you're not sharing the workload around here, you know, I'm the one person that's doing A, B, C, and D. If you continue to do A, B, and C, and D and just have that conversation, nothing's going to change. So when you change, the other person changes. Yeah, that is, um, any thoughts on that, Dennis, in terms of change or experience? Yeah, it was, it's it, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's the, you can't change anybody else. I've had people come to me, actually the person is, uh, a while back come to me and asked me to uh, uh, meet and work with his wife because they were married six months and they weren't, she wasn't settling in, unquote. And uh, you do the, marriage counseling then, is there? <laughs> <laughs> I, try, I try not to. <laughs> it's a new form of business coaching, eh? Uh, sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was just yeah. The, th the thing is that uh, yeah, people wanting someone else to change, and it doesn't happen. And actually, this guy went so far as to ask to meet me to talk. And I said, "Fine, I'll meet you and I'll talk. We we'll meet for a coffee." And I met him in a, in a local cafe for a coffee, and uh, I grabbed our coffee. We went to sit down, and there was this woman sitting at the table as well. And he said, "Dennis, Dennis, this is my wife. I won't say the name. Dennis, this is my wife." And he walked out the door you need to talk yeah. and he walked off oh. and left this woman yeah. shell shocked in front of me wondering who the heck has he presented me with here so I somehow yeah, I, I somehow think communication is a difficulty in that relation oh, yeah that was that was a thought that crossed my mind but it, it, the thing is that uh, it, it's this thing that we seem to there is a feeling and people can have a feeling that it's always somebody else's problem there's almost a deflection of blame to something else rather than taking ownership and well, a second ownership is important. And I suppose yeah. one of the things is uh, uh, just to move it on a little bit about, you know, in any change, then there's going to be obstacles and, uh, and setbacks. And uh, how can we deal with setbacks is, is a real, you know, uh, and sometimes looking at setbacks, we can figure, uh, was there a setback that I over, overcome before? Because quite often, finding new things, uh, new ways to overcome things, it's actually, it's more about how do we, over, how do we get to a point of uh, what have we done previously? And how, what have we forgotten? And what, what tool from my toolkit before can I use again to help myself uh, to get over this particular obstacle? One of the real interesting things is about um, uh, the whole area of, of, of I, I want to sort of, we move things a little bit on to the, we talk about the strength strong, I'm looking at, we've looked at stress management and we've looked at the change, but I want to focus a little bit on the staying well business, okay? And I want to take a, a particular a strategic look or a more higher level look at that staying well. And um, so, in psychology, for many years, uh, psychologists were we were always asked, like, "What's wrong with this person? What's what's it, it, it was? It's quite for many years. It was a very deficit oriented. What were the person's deficit? Plug those deficits and get them back on track. And only in the last 20, 30 years, we start looking at people that are well. What keeps well people well? And it's a really fascinating and interesting question about what keeps well people well, and. But what we what what uh, this comes from uh, Martin Seligman, uh, authentic happiness, and what keeps well, well people well is have having a life of pleasure, meaning, and engagement, having purpose in our life, having passions in our life, something to get up for, having meaning, pleasure, meaning, and engagement. Now it's challenging at the moment to have pleasure, but some people will have pleasure. They'll have pleasure, meaning, and engagement, and. Through the uh, pathway of positive psychology, they identified a number of different uh, roads to getting meaning and engagement. And it's a key question for, like, for our viewers today is what gives, what, what's meaning and engagement for you? 
what gives you meaning and engagement? Because you see, pleasure is short lasting. If I had the magic power here now of giving everybody a 99 cone. So for our Malta and UK viewers, a 99 cone is a lovely cone with a lovely bit of chocolate in the top of it. And uh, if I gave you one of them and you savor that, that sounds lovely, doesn't it? But if I gave you a second cone after that finished, or if I gave you a third cone, pleasure, is, it shows you that pleasure is short lasting. But meaning and engagement is like a dynamo. It's like a power. It keeps us, it sustains us. So what gives us meaning and engagement? I can think of certain world leaders where it's all pleasure, 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 and very little on meaning and engagement. So have what gives you meaning and engagement? And one of the areas, the pathways towards that for some is through education, whether it be formal education or, or edu different, you know, an education. And there's an opportunity I know in that you can complete the certificate in SME management. And uh, I'm, I'm really proud to be here today with Griffith College and uh, Chambers Ireland. And but you can continue with your with this program with the program. You can make a submission, and then you have a certificate in SME management. That's an action that you can do. That's within your circle of control that you can complete. And, uh, and and take that and we know that uh, people who uh, progress down an education pathway get meaning and engagement a purpose in their life for others then it's about being good to others uh, good to others uh, can include like social justice and being engaged in activities around social justice and that could be around uh, volunteering and we know that people who volunteer uh, uh, get more than they give um, in terms of uh, satisfaction and confidence. And then we know that uh, people, the other area is about being good to ourselves. And that, that's having the, in context of uh, uh, some um, uh, prudence and uh, uh, gratitude. And we know that practicing gratitude can be very powerful in terms of uh, 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 being good to ourselves so if we look at different pathways then we've education pathway growth and learning we have uh, uh, the, uh, good to others good to ourselves um, finding meaning beyond the material world for some people that can be faith-based it can be awe and appreciation of nature and beauty so that can give us that can gives us meaning and purpose so what gives you meaning and purpose and it's something to think about, you know, and uh, something. So because if you're in this in these different circles, we can be in this circle of where we're stuck and frozen and we're stressed and we're uh, we're in that circle or we can be in a circle of uh, learning. And that's where you, a lot many people are now. They're learning new skills. They're learning to adapt to stress. They're le learning to 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 cope. And they're learning to understand that their irritability is normal. They're learn so we're lear we're learning how to restructure, re-engineer, and reboot our business. We're we're learning, uh, and then growth. So we move from learning phase into a growth phase. And that's, you know, that's the invitation. So we're not like myself, Dennis, or anyone here this morning. We're inviting you to think about things. We're inviting you to change. We're inviting you to manage your stress. We're inviting you. We're not telling you. We don't all, we, we experience stress. We experience stuckness in, in trying to, uh, uh, you know, there's no, uh, this is an ongoing process of human uh, journey that we all share. Nobody has the answers here. There's vulnerability and there's strengths. And that's what when, where our own vulnerability is a strength as well. But what gives us meaning and purpose is really a powerful question. I, I think actually what you're, what you're talking there, I mean, the, 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 you mentioned about the program is Reboot Your Business. I think this is an ideal opportunity. The enforced Black Swan, as you've called it, event that we have right now, is a perfect um, opportunity to reboot ourselves to step back and actually uh, uh, reflect on exactly what you've said, the, the, what gives us purpose, what, what, you know, us focus and think about where we are. And then the bit, the business as well, the business is important, obviously it's our livelihoods, but this self the inwards looking, I think it's something we don't do often enough in, in our lives because we get caught up in the day to day stuff. So, it's a perfect opportunity in the current situation rather than, I suppose, stressing to actually do something about it and do something positive and that's to start thinking and reflecting and rebuilding. Yeah, I, I think so. And then what helps us do that is confidence. And what, you know, uh, confidence is something that 
you know, before we uh, engage in behavior change or something uh, like that, it's our, where's our level of confidence? And one of the things that I'd be interested in is where people's levels of confidence are in the context of, uh, and we're going to bring a poll up now, actually. So uh, just to get what I want to tr we want to try and understand is where you are in terms of level of confidence um, around uh, the applied the knowledge that you've learned today, or uh, that you know that you've learned, you've you've attended an incredible program where you've looked at. Uh, you've heard some wonderful speakers, some honest speakers. People have come in and re had to re, you know, reboot their business. You've uh, the, the diff where, How would you rate your confidence about the, what you've learned uh, today and over the program? Uh, how confident are you that you can apply that? How confident are you? So we're just interested in knowing that because what happens is before you change, your confidence needs to change, and that's something that. Uh, we, we're really interested in. While you're doing that poll there, one of the things I'd like to see is that uh, uh, that someone says that failure is not a fatal, it's a cultural, cultural, especially the background of a mature generation. Some really interesting comments there. Well, I'll definitely be looking at all these comments. Um, uh, what gives me meaning and engagement is getting involved in interesting video projects. Yeah, that's sort of, so what gives you, they're your passions. And it's interesting, if I said to you now, many people have passions here, you're quite, uh, would you, people with passions are surprised that there's a lot of people that don't actually have many passions in their life. So it sort of splits 50-50. Uh, a lot of people are really intense and have lots of passions. And then for those that don't have passions, it's like a menu. I'd encourage you to sample the menu of different things that you can go do through the whole education, through different pathways to being good to yourself, being good to others, um, uh, finding meaning beyond the material world as a way of uh, developing uh, uh, um, those passions in your life, having passions. So give give us a uh, give us a, a vote on the confidence, and then we'll talk specifically around that. Also, if you've any, uh, if we'd welcome any, if you feel that you're get, getting some uh, some positive stuff from today, please put that into the Q's and A's. We'd really appreciate that. So in there terms of scores, confidence, then uh, the confidence are you to, is uh, well, hundred percent confident. That's really strong. So lots of really po like that's so there's roughly about say uh, my maths. <laughs> wish there was a rounding up piece of this but roughly 30 percent of people a little bit more 35 percent of people are 50 and under and so so and and about that's 65 50 and over uh so it's why the key question i'd ask there is you know your own number there uh, if you're 100 percent, then you got to keep that engine figure out what you're doing because that's your doing really well if you're if you're a number below that what do you need to do to shift it by 10 how can you shift that confidence by 10 what do you need to do now what action do you need to do this is in comes from the area of solution focused therapy where we ask people to scale where they are how confident are you about behavioral change well now we're asking you how confident are you about applying the skills and if you're say you're 60 how do you get to a 70 what do you need to do is that a phone call is that a bit more work is that a refocus on your SWOT analysis? Is that a, a you, you know, is that a discuss with other bit, network more with business owners? Uh, does, you know, does that mean just going for, taking a risk and getting out there and doing it? So what, what do you need to do to make it happen? Do you need to market differently, et cetera? So what do you need to do? That's the difference. How can you shift that by 10? And only you can answer that for yourself in terms of how you shift it by 10. Um, what do you need to do? Uh, they're very good figures over there, aren't they? They're yeah, very, they're really strong. It shows a, 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 a very strong practical focus program. So it does. And just complete it out now and try and get that cert done in the SME management. So in terms of, uh, uh, so if you've had any uh, uh, positive comments or if any feedback, remember I said feedback is the champion so, or the fit, breakfast or champion. So if you feedback for, for me, please put it into the Q&A because I always want to learn, get stronger when I do these things. If you've, uh, or if you have general feedback, it would be great for, for us as well. Is there um, uh, 
any, 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 do you want to discuss anything else then around confidence or where do you think we might bring the conversation then? I think, I think we would, could we, would we bring it into the Q&A at this stage and say, is there anything coming back from people? Okay. Hello. Hi guys, back again. So yes, lots of, this is great. I'm delighted we brought in the polls, Eddie, because I think it makes it very um, uh, real and it's a real temperature check to see where people are at. And uh, thanks to everyone for engaging on that. So let's have a little look at some of, let's see if we can help a few people out here. We're in the Q, Q and A phase, folks. So if you We're this opportunity so, to yeah. throw in lots of questions, um, we'll try and get to some answers, and uh, that'll okay. be fab fabulous. So, to... okay, um, very powerful, Eddie. A lot of uh, um, <laughs> we have a request for a weekly session from yourselves, um, and it was really, really needed. It's been so helpful. So thank you for that. Very, very kind comment. Uh, close that one. Now, the next one, um, the, I suppose it's more of a, um, actually I'm gonna bring one up here that I thought was good a few minutes ago. And it was, um, it was back to, that back to that question when we talked about um, managing stress, but also, yeah. um, you know, this idea of changing, uh, when you mentioned uh, Dr. Reddy about um, if you change, Others will change, you know, potentially. Yeah. So you change yourself first. But yeah. This was a comment from Ryan. And it was, uh, I have in the past few weeks, greatly increased the level of sharing responsibilities to come up with ideas, develop solutions, create new content for our services and new ways to offer these services across the team um, compared to pre-COVID. So it's lifted a huge amount of pressure from my shoulders and reduced his stress uh, considerably. Still some See, way to go. Yeah, mm. but in the right direction. That's, see, I I'd see now, like everyone's on here today is a tribe, and you like you have everyone is really great knowledge in different places. So there's an example of Ryan sharing with the team. But it, I get the sense that beforehand he sort of held that for mm. for whatever reason, and we we might get into a little bit of that. Like, but it could be for, that he held it because he was concerned that someone would walk away with it, or his power and control. But there's the wisdom of the tribe and the group is really powerful. And by sharing it out, what he's found is that then it also creates creativity. So when it, so when it, if you're trying to generate, and I suppose this is the challenge for SMEs that are all that are on their own or very small groups. They, they don't necessarily get the opportunity to do the brainstorming. And it, it brings the value of being involved in the dif different business networks, such as Chambers Ireland. So, so, so to get involved where you get the opportunity to share and through that sharing, there's learning and opportunity to, for connection. And uh, uh, so that's one of the things that I think is a really good example of how sharing can, uh, can, can, can deep can, that was sounds like a deep pressurizing but also yeah. you get other other people's uh, really good ideas as well another question guys for our, um just in terms of sme owners time on their hands any podcasts or youtube links that you could suggest or share with us that would help well i listen to david mcwilliams i find him interesting um in terms of uh so podcasts you know uh uh, particularly, I'm sure there are, are more business oriented ones, but there are ones around like uh, 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 there's a number of different ones for mental well being, uh, in terms of Niall Breslin, is a number mm -hmm. on uh, the, the Get Out of Your Mind series. He's, he's an energizer, he's a morning meditation and an evening meditation, and they're all on Spotify and uh, actually have been nominated for uh, one of the top podcast awards in UK as well. So uh, th th there are a number of different podcasts in this area. Pat okay. Lively does some in terms of uh, good mindfulness and co uh, good um, uh, coaching type uh, podcasts. Lots of podcasts out there, yeah. Brilliant, excellent. There's some great suggestions. Um, just a, a comment on the, that point about thoughts we talked about earlier you can't get into trouble for your thoughts or equally advance with your thoughts you can if you take action on the thoughts turn the positive thought into action um so that's so that's a person just that's a really good point that uh, mm. 
uh, actually, it's a really interesting point because uh, if you wait for a feeling for something to happen, I have a, I have a, uh, a drawer there, right? So I'm going to do a little exercise here, okay? And you can see that filing cabinet behind me there. And I have really positive feelings in that drawer there. And I'm going to wait. I'm just going to wait now. And I'm going to wait until that, that drawer opens. And all them, I'll then access them positive feelings. And I'll just wait and I'll access them positive feelings. No, if I do the action, I can't get over there and pull the drawer. Action precedes motivation. If you're waiting for a feed, so one of the things is uh, when we're looking at stress and we look at the whole area of physical exercise, if you wait for the feeling to go and do the exercise, you won't do it. If you get, uh, if you uh, engage in that 30 minutes of activity and you build it in as part of your routine, the action will then, the feelings will, you never, you never feel bad after your exercise. But it's I hard to, sometimes to do it. I think that, ex that extends as well from the, into the, I suppose, the business side of things where we have the concept of paralysis by analysis. We're always mm. waiting for the next report, the next piece of information before we decide to do anything. And there comes a time where we just have to hold our nose and jump to an extent. And in learning in business, and you know, uh, Michael Ryan, he's on the WHO, he's uh, a Sligo mm -hmm. man mm -hmm. who's, uh, but he says, uh, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good when it comes to emergency management, right? And in, in life, it's similar. It, it, in psychology, we've talked about this a lot, like perfect parenting. We worry about that because we think good enough parenting is good enough. You know, don't let per perfect, it, it, if you wait for perfection, you won't get into action. So move into action and then uh, then it creates new new reactions. So, so it is. So don't let the perfect be the enemy to good. There's even the concept, I suppose, that we're, we're a lot of people in business would have heard of, you may have heard of as well, in, in, in the psychology, I think it's called best practice, looking for the best practice in something. And that's actually been changed over the last number of years, or, you know, last, I mean, relatively recently. And it's now just look for good practice because there's always right. room for improvement. There's always room for doing something better. But what you're looking for is what's good now. What's and good now, I, yeah. And then I work from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good, yeah, yeah because it's, yeah, super. There's a question come in from uh, on the YouTube channel, and that was, how can we continue to be kind and empathetic <clears throat> to ourselves and others when we return post-COVID, particularly if we weren't that great beforehand? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> they weren't. <laughs> They've, they have well, changed. How, so do you keep it up? A, so how do you keep it up? Well, it's, it, it sounds like if you're, if they say it takes 30 days to change a habit, you'll be definitely well changed by the end of this whole <laughs> period. Um, to, with compassion, really, you know, and it's just an orientation towards compassion and kindness. And compassion starts with ourselves. How, are we, how we can be compassionate towards ourselves. How do we, how can we look at that area of compassion? Um, uh, and that kindness, and why would it change afterwards? Because if you if you continue with that kindness and that radical kindness, and then that will impact on those around you, so it will. Yeah. Yeah. Just, thanks for that. That was uh, another good one, and I think this will, a lot of people will relate to this one, and it's in from Joe, um, all the way from Malta, and it is this idea of now that people are remote working. Yeah. How, as the business owner, how do you protect your workers while they're working from home or teleworking and just making sure that their mental well-being is, uh, but they don't have any impact as a result of, like, how do you protect them yeah. mentally? You see, I think there's two things, right? There's remote working and then there's and the, the, the process of remote working and then there's remote working during the the COVID period. They're two, two quite different things, you know, working through the pandemic and working uh, remote working. So like in terms of guidance around remote, remote working would be ensuring that you have a, a proper structured office area, that, you're, uh, that you, you take breaks, that you regularly hydrate, that you're, so in a way, and then what I, what I hear there from Joe and Malta is, is a concern for other colleagues, which is a wonderful thing, right? Um, and it, 
sometimes that's a thinking for someone and that's what we do we think for other people but also you can bring them in like the way rob brought it in you know i'm concerned about remote working for all of you guys that are doing this is there anything i can do now to support you in that is there anything that you know that uh I, I can do is there any guidance or suggestions you might have for us as a team that we might do if there's a team of people involved and then you're sort of saying well okay now it's shared a bit i sort of i'm sharing sharing that i want to support you support the team but i'm also looking from support um i'm looking from ideas for the team as well so it's not like a hierarchical thing because actually it's interesting when it comes to uh, human being and human doing. And when I work, when I go into companies and organizations, I'm actually very quickly, I say, this is not about the status or role that you have here today because everybody is a human being. So this and the mental well-being is about, is for everybody. It's not about where you are in the, in the hierarchy of, 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 of the world that you're in. Yeah, it's uh, thank that's great. I hope that helps, Joe. Um, and some nice feedback from Tina. Uh, love that quote. Don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. That really resonated for for Tina. And question about uh, another. Actually, a comment. It was a, another comment. Uh, I really enjoyed Dr. Eddie's piece. I know this is for business, but I have taken a lot of points for personal use. This time in crisis has highlighted a lot of things for me personally and made me look at things, life and work balance, managing time. Uh, it is or it can be extremely challenging to juggle childcare and homeworking and do a good job at both. It's back to that point of don't try to be good perfect. Enough job. Good enough. We just need to be good. Yeah. We just yeah. need to be good enough. But, it, it, you know, I think that's. You know, we do bring ourselves, like, or we bring the family side of it. So we can't just turn off as we exit and become the business person without all that other piece. So, and businesses that are focusing around sustainability know that when it comes to the workers, that they have many different roles and juggles in their life. Um, what, what I find interesting is, if, is, is there any words, I'd be really interested to know if any words resonated for individuals today or any phrases or did something connect with them today that they feel, what, what will you take away with, with you today? What would, could you put in some words in the chat there? Um, what, what resonated for you? Uh, just as uh, don't let the perfect be the enemy, the good mm -hmm. resonate for somebody. I wonder what did something resonate for you today? Uh, that would be really helpful. I want to actually, it's interesting. I want to just talk a little bit about sleep, would you believe? Because I think sleep is one of the quickest wins to our own mental well being. Staying strong and staying well is sleep. Getting enough sleep, reducing our alcohol intake, uh, because we know that's gone, uh, gone up during this period. And uh, um, sleep is, is, is the foundation. Sleep, nutrition, exercise, body movement is the foundation to our, uh, our well being. And uh, getting enough sleep is really, really uh, important uh, to, to ensure that we're able to sustain our well-being. Yeah, one of the first comments uh, on that, Eddie, uh, change. Change is the only constant in life. Yeah. That's from yeah. Paul. Action proceed, precedes motivation. The real um, law, law of psychology that we know... Uh, that uh, action precedes motivation. So if we uh, are working with people who actually with depression, um, we get them to, if to, to get them to start moving, it's called behavioral activation. We get them moving, 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 even though they don't want to move because we ask them to move first. And then, and then we find that it starts uh, shifting the way they are in terms of negative mood. The wisdom of the tribe, as I'm inclined to find solutions on my own, to present solutions rather than allow others to develop the solutions with me. Yeah, I think that's a that's a really interesting one because uh, just allow that to happen. Like I do a Facebook live every Thursday at nine o'clock, and uh, we've about a hundred people on there, and we just talk about about our well being uh, during this COVID period, it's support for each other. But we use a lot of the wisdom of the tri tribe in that space, so we do. Um, action first. We seem to certainly have uh, created a, a sense of. Uh, Good. Just do it. Just do it. Just, just do it. Do yeah. it. Just do it. Just, just do it. Go for it. That used to be my New Year's resolutions uh, for many years. Go for it, you know, because I'd be, I'd be, you'd be wondering, thinking, then I'm just go for it. 
go for it go for it actually it. there's one uh, participant who is uh, really going for it on on and he's working he went the he's going the, the learning route um doing a master's in occupational health and he just was looking for some advice around uh the self-employed stress and the self-employed in the construction industry and um I'm looking to engage some self-employed working in the construction industry. Any thoughts from Dr. Eddy on who and how to reach out for some information uh, for a thesis proposal? So that's, um, that's a quite a specific to, one. When it, yeah, it's a very specific one, but I would tell you when it, come, when it comes to your thesis and any type of piece of work, you, you're, it's re, to me, it's all about getting in and out. It's making it manageable, achievable, because the idea uh, people have love have the brilliant ideas, but sometimes when they get them on paper and they're doing their thesis, if you if you're struggling to get your population for your thesis, then uh, and it might be the great idea. To me, it's all about uh, getting out getting out of it um, as stress free as possible, identifying what it is, what, what population can it get get to, and then uh, targeting. So, for example, it might be more appropriate to look at like a construction firm such as CISC or somebody like that, where you know you have a population and you're able to do it within that group. Um, so uh, I just think make it achievable. Don't make a headache for yourself because you're under timelines when it comes to your master's. That, that's something I found as yeah. well. Doing, doing my uh, master's is, and I found it during the doctorate I'm doing at the moment, is the same thing. The, the mantra that stuck with me from that is inch wide, mile deep. Take a small piece of focus and just drill on that. Too many people when they're doing research tend to go cast the net too wide and as one mentor said to me at one stage when I told him I was trying to research he's he's when I stopped talking he said and I suppose you want to cure cancer during during your lunch break <laughs> I said, you're, you know, you're, doing, you're, you're doing too much so just a small thing as Eddie said focus it in on a specific area specific company specific whatever make it manageable make it doable yeah excellent advice Dennis um I hope that helps. Um, a great, nice summary from Niall, uh, the feedback. Number one, what would you do if you weren't afraid? That really resonated for him. Pleasure, meaning, engagement, fulfillment in life. Human doing versus human being. Be good to yourself and passion. That's so, a great summary, Niall. Really yes. good. You know, it captures what we're talking about here today is that the, the staying strong and staying well if you can answer those questions and revert to those questions, you will stay strong. You will stay well because you've, that, you've captured the essence of what we've talked about today. Super. Actually, a question coming in in terms of um, it's, it's um, around change in behavior. If someone at home is depressed, how do we encourage behavioral action? That's a, um... so, so obviously we'd start with GP um, if a, per a person is experienced yeah it's, it's a really important question one four people that's 25 percent of people will experience a mental health challenge and difficulty and uh, so uh, and sometimes many times it's wives that are very concerned for husbands or sons or daughters uh, who uh, it's generally the mums in the house that, that are really worried about others and uh, they, they, they're trying to get them to change and I suppose the question is uh, uh, is there a learnt is there a, are you creating a dependency that other person by not naming it out in a gentle way and saying look I'm so it could be it goes like I'm really concerned about you I've noticed that you're not the same energy you're not your bubbly self you're lying in a lot you seem to be drinking heavily at night time you know you're lost contact with your friends so this a lot, a lot of these are sending up warning signs for me this is not your normal you i want to help you i want to support you um so we're going to so is so and it's that type of uh, nudging conversation to support a person to change that's, I have a uh, that's a good, yeah that's a good um this one uh is a question around yeah you know the, the person wants to take action but is not getting yeah. headway or not getting a bit of momentum. Consultancy business uh, had five clients down to one, stressed now. How do I, uh, you know, doing, availing of all the courses, availing of all the support, but not getting traction. Uh, 
I suppose it's maybe a case of... I'm a big fan of like having wise people in your life. And I know through the local enterprise boards and different, there's mentors, mentors and uh, opportunity for, for mentorship. I mean, uh, I, so what I would think is, obviously, you know yourself that you need to build a more a, a broader client base at one level. But you might also figure you have other skills that you might be able to apply to a different, to, to multiple areas. So what, how would you break down what you do, what skill sets that you offer, and how could you re-offer that out to the market? And how do you, how do you re, 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 uh, refocus or re-engineer or reboot? So that's sort of where I would think that you have a bit of work to do there, because to me, it would be around uh, like some business coaching to break it down. To me, I, I see a really strong skill base but like, how do, how do you, was there, I don't mean this in a, you know, but in a challenging way, I think it's important that we're challenged at times. You know, were, were you comfortable with your five clients and that was it, you, know, you weren't orientated. So now, you, so it's about ensuring that, you know, it's like suppliers that uh, during Brexit, where, where people were challenged to look at their supply chain and, and having different pathways in their supply chain so that there's no vulnerability in the link in their business. And similarly, like now you have this opportunity, you've got one client, okay, you, if it sounds like you're stuck, but now is the time to talk to others, reevaluate your skill base, is there something now that you can pitch into the market that's COVID, post-COVID recovery orientated to support people and, and or particularly get a niche in that, in that that area because that's going to be around for a while. And uh, so th that's sort of some of the areas that I would uh, suggest. And I think we might just, we'll just give this last one before we wrap up. And it's something, it's oh, yeah. a little bit of feedback for ourselves actually. And uh, that is that, Thanks so much for the series. I find them, uh, I still have some to watch. This, I feel that this one should have been the first one. Uh, it's extremely hard to plan ahead, analyze and review when you're stressed and you're worried uh, about your family, business and health. Thanks for the insight, insightful webinar. And, and thank you for sharing uh, on social media and to your customers. So that's the sort of um, a learning for us as well that and it's back to what we said earlier at the start is that it does start with the individual and we had that at the beginning Dennis it starts with you and where you're at three weeks ago or four weeks ago or eight weeks ago um it's a it's so definitely getting a lot of benefit out of the session so that's much appreciated for the feedback and it's lovely yeah to hear so I see Actually, it's a couple. It's a lovely yeah. one. And I see someone that come through there. Yeah. It talks about their supports for others, but not for me. But in a way, the supports for you can. Uh, it's about building that supports for yourself. If you're concerned about somebody else, and uh, there, uh, there, there are supports out there in terms of uh, mental health Ireland, aware, grow. Uh, there, there's, and then bit, bit you to figure out what's in your network that nurtures you. What helps you, like? In your, this is just a general one. Like, what helps you thrive? What? Who are the toxic drainers in your in your life? Who who drain that, drain you out? And energy drainers. Are you able to set healthy boundaries? Are you able to be assertive? Um, are, are you able to uh, uh, build that support network? Like, if you're going to be staying well, staying strong, then building a support network is critically important. And uh, I see that uh, a real interesting one where somebody was brought back after uh, uh, to avoid the uh, how do I so I was one of 20 people let go I'm being brought back as a single person how do I avoid the claims of office politics or favoritism I've been in the company longer I've been work, work, working quietly in the background any help on how to avoid the mm -hmm. general awkwardness among colleagues the awkwardness is a in a way to me what I read there is somebody who was uh, brought back possibly didn't have to be brought back, but was brought back. So they're valued and your contribution is valued. You don't make the decision to bring you back. So you're not, respons you're not responsible how other people feel. You can't control other people's thoughts. You just stay in your sphere of control, what you control, control because your actions, your behavior, your work ethic, um, many things I think brought you back, uh, not just because you're there the longest. And, uh, you, you, that, so, and what other people think about favoritism, it, let's not let's get to the point in our life where we're not uh orientated towards what other people think if we're going to start moving our life the way other people think 
that goes, is only going to lead to a lot of unhappiness in our life. Yeah, no, solid advice. And actually, just as we, as we come to the end, Dennis and uh, Dr. Reddy, are there any kind of final parting uh, nuggets to share for the, for the, for the tribe? If I, can, if I can just extend on one of the questions Eddie asked where to go um, he asked a question I'm going to go blank now I'm not going to remember it but anyway um, about if you had no fear mm -hmm. um, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail so what steps would you take now and it's about it's a for me it's about that it's about it's what I've had to do over the years is when business took a hit when I took a hit it's getting up and it's taking that first step and it's it's yeah businesses are in a scary place now uh, business owners are worried there's personal issues potentially climbing the wall with the family you're stuck behind four walls with twenty four seven. Um, I'm lucky I have a massive house and there's only three of us in it, so we just take a wing each, uh, and, and that ends it. Um, You're very lucky, Dennis. Yeah, <laughs> except for the mother-in-law in the shed in the back garden, yeah. Um, but and that's a whole other story. But it's it's this it's creating the space for ourselves, It's but it's equally taking the time. We I remember working with a group of, of unemployed people a number of years ago and I stood in the room at the start of a session and I started a course and I said, you're the luckiest people in the world. And they were long-term unemployed and they're looking at me as if I had two heads. I did make sure I had clear access to the door to get out in case any of them decided to challenge me on it. Um, and basically my argument was, you know, you're being paid to be there. You're being paid to do what you need to do. Okay, business owners don't have the, the pay bit, but you, it is where it is. We are where we are now. We've been given through this program immense tools. Dr. Eddie, with his expertise, has come in and given phenomenal uh, experience and value and, and nuggets for us to, to take away and use. And I think it's, it's basically now reflecting on those and taking that first step. Nothing will move, nothing will change unless we make the change, unless we start the change. Nothing, it'll be the same tomorrow as it is this morning when you got out of bed. So the key Until. thing there is then don't wait for the feeling. Don't wait for this feeling, this magical uh, thing that's yes. outside the door. Make the action. Today yes. is the time. It's early. Pick it. Do the task. Always do your task that you want to put off the longest first because mm -hmm. that's when you have your most energy. So mm -hmm. get in and do it. And uh, uh, I want to wish you all really well. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you and Griffith College and uh, Chambers Ireland. Um, continue with that SME program, the CERT. That's an action you can do straight away. And uh, 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 reboot and stay well, because the most important thing in your business is your business, you. One, one thing I ask people is, what's the worst that can happen? And most people will say, well, nothing. I'll be exactly where I stand. I'll be exactly where I am right now. And I correct them. I say, you won't be. You'll be a step further forward because you will have been where you were. Plus, you now know that something didn't work. So you'll have one step better down the line. So now you can try something different. It's all progress. It's all moving forward. It's seizing the momentum, seizing the opportunity and just going for it. Complete the SME program, get the, the piece of paper, get the qualification or get the, the, the cert to, to, to put on the wall. And I remember when I got my first third level qualification, I didn't go to college when I left school. I was told not to. It was better if I was better use my parents' money not to send me to college, basically. Um, and I've been collecting these things like I collect stamps. And it's the feeling when you get when you have achieved it, when you've, when you've taken your business, when you've taken something to another level. Is, is fantastic and that feeds and it just it it begets the next stage and the next stage and the next stage and it just becomes this business term that we like using for our business kaizen continuous improvement and we continue to improve ourselves we continue to improve our business they work in tandem as somebody mentioned earlier on the person taking personal value from what is a business course people do business People are involved in business. People own companies. People run companies. You know, you can't take the person out of the business. 
So if we move the person forward, we're moving the business forward. Hopefully. <laughs> That's the plan, Dennis. That's the plan. Well, listen, I know I'm going to take the um, uh, don't wait for the feeling. I like that one. Just do it. I'm, I'm going to take that one, Dr. Eddie. Um, so I would like to thank you so much, both of you, um, uh, for so much practical, solid, sound and caring, really, really caring advice um, for ourselves and the team and at Griffith College and for everyone who's tuned in. So I'm going to pass you back now to Michael to just wrap and close out the session. So thank you so much. Thanks, Ned. Wow, that was so motivating. My God, um, thank you so much, Dr. Eddie Murphy and Dennis Coleman for the presentation. Um, the feedback has been brilliant throughout and we've had a lot of really personal stories being shared. So really appreciate that. And thank you so much also for engaging with the polls. In the subject of feedback, we have a short survey um, which would take no longer than five minutes that we would really appreciate um, all of the attendees and anyone watching on YouTube also, um, if you would like to um, answer that survey and let us know what you thought of the series um, and how you'd like to move forward. Um, we'd really appreciate if you would answer that. And um, if you'd like to answer the survey um, and you don't have, and you're not registered, you can uh, contact us and we'll be happy to send it to you. So we have reached the end of the series. Um, it has been an amazing experience for everyone involved, myself personally. Um, I think one of the key learnings that I took is, um, you know, to keep going and to keep the faith during this time for everyone. It's a really challenging and uncertain time, but there are things that we can do to motivate and to keep ourselves going. And it's important not to lose sight of those things. So I hope that all of the sessions have inspired you and given you food for thought for your businesses and your personal life also, and that you've also been able to use the resources throughout, including the workbook. Think about what you could add to the workbook from today. I'm sure there are things that you could add from today and uh, we really encourage you to use that. So um, there's nothing more to say except for thank you so much for everyone to, who was engaged on social media also using the hashtag Reboot2020. Thank you to Chambers Ireland, who's been our partner throughout this series. We really appreciate your support. We appreciate you sharing all of the posts on social media and the engagement throughout with our team. Thank you to everyone in Griffith College, Dublin, Cork and Limerick. Thank you to all the team who are here today, Geraldine, Sinead, Anthony, and Sean. Thank you to um, Tomas as well for supporting us the whole way through and to Michael and Griffith College. And also um, thank you to all of you, all of the small businesses throughout Ireland, internationally also in Malta and the UK. Can't believe that's fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us, those of you that are members of Chambers Ireland. And until we see each other again, Stay safe and well and um, take care.